All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. In this scene, in this video today of OFR behind the scenes, the OFR got a few new fish. I'm gonna show you those new fish. One of them is really, really rare, really nice. Well, all of them are really nice actually, but I'm gonna show those to you and you know, some more stuff around the, the rescue today. Busy work, it's always busy around here, so stick with us, we'll get right to it. Today, guys, Will Star got me going up and, up and going. I'm not ready for this day. Let's get down to business. Son. Get down, let's get down to business. Son. Been in there taking <laughs> care of Tracy, and I'm tired. But all right, uh, uh, let me tell you about this. It was exciting last night, Will. You should have seen. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We got these two boxes in from the airport. These two right here. And uh, Josh went and picked them up, and he's like, "Dad, get out here. I need you." And I come running out here, and he's like, "Unbox this." I'm like really so i started unboxing and opened it up and, and the first thing we have is this guy back here this here before i get to the fish one of our members jeff Beatty, actually bought it mm. got a hold of josh bought it because he heard me talking about how much i wanted it. rodrigo had it and rodrigo wanted too much for it type thing you know and you know it's one of the seven known man eating man eating catfish of the freshwater world it's it's just something amazing. I saw at the shed aquarium. I called up Rod, and then I'm like, you know, that's too expensive. I'm, I'm never going to waste that kind of money on myself. And then later on, we're actually we are we like, screw it. I'll sell this. I'll sell that. I'll, I'll put it on eBay. I'm going to make some money to to get that. I want that fish. Rodrigo told me it was sold. I was Ooh. heartbroken. Here, Jeff Beatty had already bought it up to give it to me as a ah. gift. Oh my God. Wow. You gotta love our community, Jeff. You're just amazing, brother. Thank you so. Yeah, I, but I feel so bad that people do that for me when that's a luxury. It's not a have to. It's not for the rescue. It's something I want to. You know, I can go without for the rescue to have. But he got it for me, so let's show it off. Nice. Back there. there he is. The job. Job cat, huh? So what you been wanting? Look at that guy back there. He's gonna look. Like get in the mood. Yeah, he just hanging. Doing anything to him? No, no, he just sitting there behind that uh, filter. He just doing his thing. But you can tell, man, that's a nice little catfish. He's gonna be huge. Huh? How big did they get, Rich? Um, well, the biggest one I've personally seen was at the shed aquarium, five foot long. Five foot long. Huh? I'm told they can get up to seven foot. Wow. But man their mouth is as big as their head at that size and their head is huge huge so what do you think he'll end up going into the uh 58 we haven't figured that problem out this is a one step at a time type problem <laughs> 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 nice. we don't really have tanks that we don't buy fish for ourselves un generally or normally because yeah. we can't afford the the real estate for one tank for this fish when right. we've got so many rescues coming yeah in. But come on over here. Now this one, this next one is from Rod Rigo from Predatory Fence. He was shipping that anyway. He was like, I'm gonna give him a little donation too. And he gave me this big old goby back here. See that guy back there? He's a big boy. Yeah, he is. He's got that orange coloration on him also. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And then he sends me a, a, a present. Where's it at? Where's that bag at, Josh? sends me this and this is a present from his son Ryan. He just oh, had a baby boy. Yeah. Uh, it was New Year's Eve. Cute little thing and it says for Big Rich from Ryan. So I start opening up and it's in tissue paper and I open this up. Here it is. It's a little baby diaper. A little tiny one. <laughs> full of poopy it looked like. It was chocolate sauce but Josh grabbed it and tried running after me. I was running like a little girl. Little <laughs> Rodrigo. <horrible>. <laughs> Rodrigo gotcha. Yeah he did and, and Josh actually bought these. They're Mormid Longistrius. They're, they're actually Mormid Dolphins, they're called the street name for them. Really smart fish. You can teach them to go through hoops, play with the ball, move the ball around. Wow. Uh, yeah, they're very, very smart fish. And where are these fish from normally? Uh, Josh? Africa. Africa. Yeah. Wow. Those, they look very playful. Oh, like yeah. Those they things in a tank good. will be very active, huh? Very active. Yeah. Man, those are nice. Really nice.
Josh, what are you getting ready to do? We are moving stuff around. You know, fish don't always work out. You know, temperaments, tank mates, whatever it might be. We're never perfect. We always try new things. Sure. We tried this hyphen in here, and we don't really. Uh, he doesn't seem to be too happy in this tank. He was way happier in his last tank. Okay. So we are going to put him in with the dolphins to see if uh, he will play nice, or the dolphins will play nice with him. And we're going to put one of the dolphins into that tank and see how they do. These guys here cannot be kept fit together. They are, we tried getting lucky because Rob said he had them in the, the, the same tank. But uh, I do not, I knew they couldn't be kept together. So I don't want to take that chance. You can see one's already starting to get stressed out from the bigger one picking on them. Yeah. Well, so. They're like uh, pound knives. You can keep one in the tank or you can keep like a, a bunch of them, like five or more together. But you keep two or three, and they all fight for their territory. Gotcha. Oh yeah, he instantly got, got his cuckolder back coming back over here. That could could be from you know a tank mate chasing him around. He's just stressed. It's uh, hard, hard to say. Yeah, bud. Yeah, you're mine now. There we go. All right, so if you see here, you know, I see this overflow box with this broken screw. This is now down to the, the bottom of uh, the overflow tube. We tried the African clawed frog in here, and somehow he managed to Got behind here and bent this out and snap the screw. Really? But somehow this was still up, and he used this to crawl out of the tank, and I found him over uh, by the threshold coming in the door. He's still alive. Now we got him back in his old tank that has uh, CPO tops. This one we thought was good. This is sealed, except for right where this is. You can see there's plastic back here, and then right where the overflow goes out, we had stuff with sponges, and since we broke that overflow, those sponges ended up coming out and we had a place to escape. So he did not work well in this tank, so we had to put him back in his old tank. And where is he now? Let's go show the people. Over there in the three tiers. Okay. There we go. There he is. Hanging out down there. The skate park. Mr. Houdini himself, huh? Right. You're gonna name him Houdini. What's the next change you got going on here, Josh? Well, if you haven't figured out already, just follow me around, you'll find out. So you're gonna have to stay <laughs> tuned. Right. But you can see we're taking the lid off this 4,400 gallon tank. Yep. So someone is coming out of quarantine and going in here. Okay. So follow me and I'll show you what we're doing. All right. You heard him, folks. We just gotta follow him around and find out. <laughs> Leave some comments right, below. So Let us know what you think it is. So down here, we've had this uh, black belt cichlid that's been in quarantine now for about three to four more weeks. He is, uh, Looking good enough. I'm comfortable with him going onto our system. So, uh, you know, the, the, these tanks are fed from our uh, system water every time we do a water change. So this is pretty much the same water. So we're just going to catch him and just do a plop and drop. Okay. Now, for those of you that don't know, a black belt is from South America. And it is a cichlid with lots and lots of color. Get this release. Oh, come on. There you go. Beautiful fish. Yeah, there he goes. He's like, man, this is a lot bigger spot now. Moving on up. <laughs> There he goes. He'll settle in real nicely in that big 4400. Uh, Looks like you used to work at a gas station or something there, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you know what you're doing. You wouldn't believe how many jobs I've worked over the years. <laughs> yeah.
I was working two, three jobs at a time. I was homeless at 15, so I was working down in Florida at a temp agency. You know, my dad threw me out at 15. I had no place to go. Yeah. I went to Florida thinking that I had a grandmother down there. I can just go down there and uh, everything would be okay. And, you know, it wasn't. No. No. So I ended up living under the intercoastal bridge in Florida. Ooh. Yeah, but I didn't have, you know, I was underage, so I couldn't work at the temp agencies. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so I lied to them and started working, and every one of them wanted my ID. And, you know, I told them all I got robbed, blah, blah, blah. And I worked in each one for like two weeks. Uh, just enough to get a paycheck, huh? Right. Yeah. And uh, I had an ID, it was just underage. So. I kept switching around that way, and I worked up enough to get a. Uh, they called down there. They're called efficiencies. Okay. Seventy-five dollars a week, and uh, then I worked up enough to get an apartment, and then about two years later, I worked up enough to move back home. Move back home. And I've been here in Ohio since. And look how far you've come from being underneath the bridge, Rich. You're right. You know what I mean? Like, good lord. Now you're able to help all kinds of other people, do wonderful things for people, you know? Turn it around. Yeah, but I couldn't imagine being a father and throwing your child out at 15 years old. Yeah, I, me, I, I, me neither. I've talked to my father about this, and he don't even remember doing it. Yeah. And uh, my, my brothers had to remind him that, you know, when he threw me out, I stayed out of the house, but it was in the middle of winter. I slept behind his pigeon coop between two trees in a hammock and my brother snuck me out a, a blanket wow. that I'd sleep on and another blanket to sleep under. Mm. And I'd still keep getting up with them and going to school in North Royalton. And uh, he didn't remember that, but he came home and caught me on his property and made me leave and get off his property. And that's when I had to go to Florida. And you know, I had a, a Honda 125 street bike, horrible little motorcycle, <laughs> single cylinder, and I, you know, I didn't even have a license, but I used it for a dirt bike because I got it out of uh, my buddy's salvage thing and, and I got it running. Well, I drove that all the way to Florida, believe it or not. Wow, a little 125. Honda 125, at that time you were not allowed on the highway with nothing lower than a 125. And to get your, light, your temps, you had to have so many hours of driving and you're allowed a temp packet with a Honda 125, you can get on the highway. This was what I was, you know, doing. So anyways, but I didn't have no money. Yeah. I was a young kid. Yeah. And I had a one gallon gas tank. That's the size of a gallon, gallon and a half, something yeah. like that. I'd get 50, 60 miles a day on the highway. And then I'd have to pull over whatever city I'm in, stop, wait until it got dark, siphon gas, fill up my one gallon gas tank huh. and get another, you know, through yeah. the night. It was crazy. Yeah. It took me two weeks, but I got to Florida. You, you got there. I didn't get caught. And uh, my dad my dad apologized for it, but you know, I'm a father. Sure. And I, there's no way. Yeah. You're, you're a baby at 15. There's no way I could ever throw any of you know, my kids or seeing any kid live on the street at 15. Yeah. I'm a father also, and I feel the same way. There's no way I would, you know, ever do anything like that to my daughter. You know, she's grown now, so. But still, I feel exactly the same way you do. Well, you know, back in them days, they were a lot, a lot more uh, strict, strict yeah. and heartless. I mean, yeah. you want to be a man? Get out. Go yeah. be a man. Well, you know. My way to the highway is, type stuff. You know, and the things I was doing bad wasn't that bad. Yeah. He was a country hillbilly guy. Okay. Every summer, he'd take my hair and buzz it from the back to the forward with the dog clippers. Yeah. All my friends at school had long hair. Yeah. He's, he's had me crying many times when I was, you know, 10 years old, and he's buzzing me again. Mm. Um, I wanted long hair. And then when I got to be uh, 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 15, I thought it was cool to hang out with the guys that liked rock and roll, you know? And, and he well, who didn't wouldn't? like that at all. Who wouldn't, though, you know? Well, he was, uh, what do you call it? Old a, school uh, country guy, maybe? From West Virginia or something like that? He is from West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. But he liked the... Uh, what are they? Bluegrass. Bluegrass. Country music. Okay. Knee slapping, banjo picking. You okay. Know, hillbillies. okay. Like hee haw type stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hee haw was, was his thing. Nice. So, uh, look how nice. Yep. Look how you got to thank Mrs. Up. Metalhead for this. She got in and cleaned the inside of this glass for us. Miss Metalhead. What a champ.
looking beautiful in there too. So you guys can see. Rich just did the outside. Like he, uh -huh. like he knows what he's doing. I just had a chat with a friend. <laughs> Got that done. Got that done, that's exactly right. Let me show you the bass tank. He just did that also. Beautiful bass in here. Got that guy hiding up underneath that rock. All right, so there you have it. Another episode of the books. Hope you guys enjoyed that, seeing those new fish. And you know, Josh had to change some tanks around, not some tanks, but some fish from one tank to another. You know, sometimes tank mates don't make it. Got to try it out, see how it works. So we had to switch that around. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave us some videos, some, I mean, some comments in our videos, you know, share them, do all that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, stay fishy. And take that and rewind it back. We'll see ya. Have a good one. Diesel. You got your Christmas sweater on? You got your Christmas sweatshirt on? What are you doing? Oh. Ah. Ah.